Hey guys, I'm Sam Crack and I've devised one of the sketchiest plans ever to fix the crack frame in our salvage Audi R8. It requires no body shops, no special frame machines, and only tools that you can buy at the local tool store. Anybody could get them and probably a few swear words that anybody could say. After the gap is closed in our frame, Rob the welder is gonna come here, he's gonna pay a visit, and he's going to weld up all of our cracks and then reinforce them with aluminum plates. Before we get started, I wanna move the car over a little bit where all the work is gonna be taking place, and then we're gonna disassemble the front corner that's got the crack in it. Let's get started. This will either be the easiest or the most difficult rebuild project I ever do. The car is off the ground. We've got the wheel removed on this side and we are going in for attack right in this area. So the way this occurred, at least in theory, is that this is a thin part of the aluminum frame here. Uh, it was a factory flaw according to what you read online and either with a worn out damper or just over time all the stress on this area causes it to crack. Now obviously somebody drove this a little bit after it started cracking. That's why we've got a, a decent sized gap in mine. In order to get this back where it needs to do, we kind of need to think in reverse. The shock right here is pushing up on the car as the car rides along the road, putting force this way, this way, this way. We can see the angle it's sitting. So basically with the car on the ground, with the jack stand somewhere close underneath this area here, we need to go ahead, we need to get this shock removed, and then we need to pull in the reverse manner that this shock was pushing up on the frame of the car. If we can do that and get this to come back in place, we'll need it welded, reinforced, and the job will be done. The shock's really only held in the place in two places, one right down here, one up top here. We might actually have to move, remove the uh, control arm here in order to get it out. I'm not positive yet, we'll figure that out shortly. But once that's done, we'll remove the fender liner right here and we should have direct access to hook up frame tools and start pulling this thing. All right, let's see. Oh yeah, this should be able to be wiggled out now. Well, let me get two hands on it. All right, that was a pain, but the strut is out. A minimal movement here. It looks like it might've spread a little bit more, but to get that strut out, it was kind of kinked in there because of the way this is moved. And so I really had to put a lot of force downward to get it out. But you can see there's nothing in the way here. We have uh, somewhat of a clear path. We should be able to get our frame tool snaked in here. So basically what we need to do is pull the opposite way that the shock was pushing. So the shock was at an angle like this, pushing up. Jack stand is in the perfect place right there to attach it. That's gonna be our anchor point, at least I hope right now. And we're gonna use a come together, I think it's called come together or pull together, to pull this back 
downward. When we do this, we should see the gap on this close up and the gap on this close up. If it's not closing up square, we're gonna stop. We're gonna review what's going on and move it around, adjust it until we get this in the right place. All that sounds good, but of course, I gotta get the tools before we get to work, so you know the best place to buy tools at. Price is smashed, kinda like the frame on my Audi. All right, we got our tools. Now I call this thing a bunch of different names. This is a pullback ram, and of course we've got our hydraulic ram pump right there, that's what we need. So we're gonna connect this thing to that, we're gonna have it up and down. I've got a few little links and chains to hopefully anchor it again to our jack on the ground. And we're gonna start pulling. I've got a link in there, and what I wanna try and do is fish this down underneath here. I don't have this anchored to anything yet, but just to test and make sure it works, I've got this all hooked up, the hydraulic line. And basically, I'm gonna pump this, and you should be able to see this contract just a little bit. And we want very little movement. Here, let me make sure. I'm gonna tighten. All right, here we go. You see it moving there? Again, it's not moving anything right now because it's not attached to anything, but that should be perfect. That's exactly what we want. I'm just adjusting the chains here due to the little bit of slack that I have, but uh, we should be able to pull this in a matter of moments, really. We're taught any more than that, and it's gonna start to pull. So let's get a camera on the damage and let's see if we can't pull it back where it belongs. Here we go. It broke. I highly recommend nobody attempts anything they see me doing in this video. It's all absolutely ridiculous. And as you can see here, this didn't work at all, at least not right here. Now I had a little bit of tension on the frame. I thought I'd give it a few hits with the dead blow hammer to see if it would move it at all downward. A dead blow mallet or a hammer is made out of like plastic or hard rubber. It will not deform metal. So even though you're gonna cringe me hitting the frame of my Audi with this, it didn't do any damage whatsoever. Well, it didn't do any more damage to the frame, but it ended up doing damage in another way that's gonna cost a good amount of money. You'll see right here. Oh no, shit. Even though a dead blow hammer will not wreck metal, it clearly wrecks glass. Right there is where I smashed it. It spidered all the way up. Gonna need a brand new windshield. Anytime you're working on framework, especially this close to the glass, they tell you to go and remove the windshield because even just twisting of the structure will crack glass. I've cracked glass working on interior pillars. This was a huge mistake and is gonna set us back a good amount. I'll pop on the screen right here how much a new windshield costs. You get an idea of that plus labor and that's what we're out for making a boneheaded mistake. Can't stop now, gotta keep moving, gotta get this frame done. Now after a few hammer hits, even though I killed the windshield, which don't remind me about, uh, I called a friend of mine by the name of Ben. You guys might know him better as V-Tuned. He's the guy that does all Goon Squad framework, a really talented young framer. And I asked him, hey, you know, I would just start hitting this with a dead blow. I know a dead blow is not gonna do a whole lot of damage, and I didn't know that it was gonna actually move it as much as it did, even though it doesn't look like it's that moved. But anyway, he told me that, yeah, hitting it with a hammer is perfectly normal, but you're gonna wanna get a stronger hammer if you wanna get it back in place. So big shout out to Ben aka VTuna. I'm gonna link his social media in the description box below because he's been a great help. Anytime I have any of these frame questions, I give him a ring and he's always been there. So definitely make sure you check him out. Another thing Ben let me know is that this is incorrect. You wanna actually run a bolt through here, like the bolt that was holding the strut in place, and then hang this on the bolt itself. So yeah, that's not right, I messed that up, and luckily it is just a hole for the bowl to go through. There's no uh, threads in there, I don't think. So we'll be good on that, but this is still indeed taut right now, so while it is, what we will do is we'll go ahead and we'll try and push this down just a little bit more and see where it goes with a little bit bigger of a hammer. Along with Ben's guidance, I upgraded all my hardware. Brand new high strength chains and links. Bigger hammers, probably the most important component of them all. I upgrade the two and three ton jack stand to a six ton jack stand. Remember, the ram is capable of pulling up to four tons, so there's a lot of force being put on this frame. The bigger, stronger hardware in place, a few pulls, and this frame started coming right back where it belonged. Now, I thought that this would all take place over five, 10 minutes the first time I pulled it, but it really took a couple days straight of pounding and pulling to finally close the gap on the frame and pop check that out this is the strut mount hole that I've been pulling from and it just completely let loose 
Uh, that was bound to happen. It was getting stressed here a little bit. So what is going to happen now is I've stopped. I've got just a little bit of pressure on this, not a lot. The uh, crack is substantially small from all the pulling, all the hammering, and a welder is coming now to weld a plate over this or just fix this, I'm not quite sure. We're gonna pull it from there one more time, get this as close as we can. I mean, it is right there, much, much better than it was before. Same thing with this. This is pretty much equal now on both sides. And uh, yeah, he's almost here. When he is here, we will get to work. Here's a quick photo timeline of the progress made on this frame crack. Here it is in its original state. Nothing's been touched. You can see the strut is still mounted. Right here is after the first few frame pulls with the wrong equipment. Then we upgraded our equipment and the gap starts closing. Finally, after two whole days of tugging it and beating it, we pretty much got the gap closed. This is right before our anchor point ripped. As for the bar on the side, the gap in that was pretty sizable as well, but with all the movement, with all the hammer hitting, it pretty much fits right back perfectly in place. You could actually wiggle it and get it right where you needed to, like a puzzle piece. At this point, Rob the welder has shown up. I know you're wondering, can he fix it? And the answer is yes. Yes, he can. sides here. I'm going to just bridge it. Okay. Go ahead and fill it up as much as I can. Set some heat in there. I'm going to go on the back side, put a little more weld, and we're going to come in here and grind it down as flat, and we're going to put the pad back on there. Okay. Weld it up, and that should be uh, good Perfect. for Perfect. This, whoa, whoa, that's hot as <laughs> That piece is gonna go there. I touched the piece, it's a little hot. It's a little hot. <laughs> Once Rob repaired the anchor piece, we pulled it taut using the ram, and then he worked his magic. This is it. Rob the welder is going to fill the hole. Rob, you're good at filling holes, right? Hey, you know what they say about welders, man. There's no hole we cannot I'm fill. <laughs> This has been welded. You can put your hand on it. It's cooled off at this point. We're gonna release the tension on the hook here and hope that this thing holds. Three, two, one. That was the car moving, but. Once Rob was finished with the driver's side, he went over to the passenger side and reinforced it in the same exact area since it's also susceptible to cracking. Before we reassemble everything, we're gonna use some self-etching primer in these areas. You can see I've already shot a little bit right here just to see. It's kind of cool. They try to match it to the frame color. Obviously, it's a little bit lighter. No, I'm not gonna clean this up. I'm not gonna bond to it. I like to leave things like this so you kind of know where your issue is. I don't like to start hiding and concealing things in the case that you know we were to have a further issue, uh, but let's hope that's not the case. So, just a little bit of this.
All right, our etching clear is dry. I probably will end up sealing this all off with something as well as on the other side. But right now, I want to get this car reassembled. I want to get it off the ground and I want to see if and how well it drives. This is the shock that we took out of the front driver's side corner of the car. Now, if you remember in the first video when I was driving, I said that this corner felt a little bit loose. That could have obviously been from the crack in the frame right here. But there was also a suspension code that pointed to an electrical issue uh, in this shock. Now, I'm not 100% positive, but usually when these mag ride shocks go bad, they leak fluid everywhere. And there is no leaky fluid. As a matter of fact, this shock looks like it was either removed and clean prior to me getting it. I have not touched this. This is exactly how it came out of the car or was completely replaced. There's nothing that looks like an issue with this shock, but we're gonna put that shock in. We're gonna see how it feels. It feels different. And if it works, we're good to go. We don't have to spend two grand on one shock. And if you replace one shock, you know what they say, replace two shocks, so do the math. Otherwise, if it doesn't work, we're gonna explore either replacing the OEM suspension with another OEM suspension, or maybe going aftermarket, maybe doing coilovers or something like that. We'll find out, let's reassemble it, let's find out exactly if it works or not. I started by attempting to press the shock back into the strut mount. These fit very snugly in place. It wasn't fitting and I noticed there was a little bit of weld material sticking out on the back of the strut mount. So I took a Dremel tool and just ground that down very, very little. In between all this, I did spray some more etching primer. Of course, we don't want anything rusting down the line. Once it dried, I tried again, and it still wasn't going in place. And that's when I noticed that this strut, it's a very unique assembly, it started to seem obvious that something was wrong with the shock. All right, we paused because I noticed that the strut mount, this is the top part, this part went underneath it, uh, was a little bit crooked on the top of the shock. And we also were having a tough time getting it in place. So I went to the parts store, rented the coil spring compressor here, compressed that, disassembled all this, and you could probably tell the rod here in the shock it's a little bit bent this way. It's tough to see exactly, but it's definitely out of shape. This will cause problems. So this is gonna be replaced. So just got off the phone with FC Piro. We went through a couple different suspension solutions. They offer one that is super competitively priced and also is really high quality according to the guys on the Audi R8 form that run this certain type of shock. They're shipping it now. I will have it very soon. So of course, I'm gonna take you along the way when we install the new suspension in the Audi R8. I want to go through a couple of the numbers over the last few days. I spent right around $200 on tools and supplies at, you know, the bargain tool store. Of course, you got to go through the line a couple times. I use the coupons right on my cell phone. And so that really lowers the cost of all the tools. And of course, I own them at the end of the day. So a couple of hundred dollars there. I paid Rob the welder $300 for his services for a grand total of five hundred dollars to repair the crack frame in the Audi R8. We can't forget I did destroy a windshield that retails in excess of over one thousand dollars plus there's hardware that goes along with that and there's installation costs. I've already scheduled a complete replacement of that even with our setback it's really kind of a minor one we will still likely have the cheapest audi r8 on the planet one that should be 100 percent and completely operable so guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you did be sure to hit that like button also if you're not already following me on instagram you can do that right here i'm posting build updates there before they go live here on youtube you can just click my link in the description box below as well take you right there guys i appreciate each and every one of you watching today and i will catch you very soon